Life cycle of stars. When stars run out of hydrogen to fuse, they fuse other elements. Main sequence stars become red giants, and bigger main sequence stars become red supergiants. They fuse helium. Once it runs out of helium, the core becomes unstable and is compressed by the rest of the star. Red giants don't have enough mass to compress, so no more nuclear fusion occurs, and they become white dwarfs. Red supergiants do have enough mass to increase the pressure and temperature of the core enough to fuse larger nuclei. Each time an element is depleted, the core shrinks until it is hot enough and at a high enough pressure for further fusion to occur. This continues until most of the core is fused into iron. Red supergiants can't fuse iron, so the core collapses and the star explodes as a supernova. The core collapses to form a neutron star, or if there's enough matter, a black hole. The hertzsprung russell diagram. Different areas show where a star is on its life cycle. The top left to bottom right is main sequence stars. The top right is red giants and red supergiants, and the bottom left is white dwarfs. Observing with telescopes. Astronomers use local and remote telescopes, and most telescopes are computer controlled. There are many advantages to this. They can be programmed to track objects. They can be programmed to scan large areas. They can be precisely positioned. They can be operated remotely. Many telescopes can be aligned together. They can network worldwide. Data recorded and processed automatically and it enables space telescope operation. Possibility of other life. The universe is huge and there are evidence of planets orbiting hundreds of close stars. They could have the necessary conditions to support life. Because of this and the scale of the universe, chances are life exists somewhere else in the universe. Space telescopes. Atmosphere affects radiation as it only lets certain wavelengths of EM radiation through. Some pass through easily, like radio waves, but others, like light, is badly distorted or almost totally absorbed. Light is also refracted and absorbed by dust. Space telescopes are much clearer, but most use ground-based telescopes because they're easier to build and maintain. They're much cheaper. It's difficult to get telescopes into space. Computers can reduce some of the distortion and it's easier to get a time slot. Observatories and cooperation. Astronomers need to work together because they need to share the costs. It's too complex and expensive for one country to build and operate a telescope. They need to share resources and expertise so they can get the best people and facilities for the job. Factors affecting choice of location. They need to avoid light pollution, so a remote area. They also need to avoid dust and atmospheric pollution, so it needs a high altitude to minimise pollution. It needs a dry location to minimise refraction from raindrops. And they need places with many cloudless nights. Other factors include the cost of the building, running and closing the facility. Access, good roads and maybe even airports need to be built. Environment. They need to damage it as little as possible. And social, there needs to be water, electricity and accommodation for the workers.